Hi, this is Tom of the University of Iowa. I'm going to show you a, a case that we did recently. You can see um, that uh, we're near the end of nuclear practice. This is a risky time in nuclear practice. And you'll see somewhere during the case that we have vitreous loss. And the signs of vitreous loss um, are uh, numerous, but include uh, sudden deepening of the chamber. Uh, and you'll see that um, when it occurs right there. And now you can see we clearly have a large uh, rent in the posterior capsule. And so I, I just want you to stop and ask yourself, um, you know, what should be our next step? Uh, this is something that's going to occur to all of us. And so at this point, I think we really want to develop a reflex uh, to move uh, to the next step. And uh, I think the next step should be to add a dispersive viscoelastic. In this case, we're using uh, Visco, which is nice because it's viscous, and that allows us to keep the chamber formed when we withdraw uh, the phaco tip. Now the question is, what do we do next? What's the next step? Uh, and I think the next step, when we know we're going to do an anterior vitrectomy, is we want to go ahead and place another incision so we have a very tight second incision. Not use the main incision, but a second tight incision uh, for the um, anterior retractor. Uh, in this case, we're going to use this MVR style blade. And um, in, in this particular case, we have to use a wider uh, incision than the paracentesis because this particular uh, anterior retractor uh, is um, about a millimeter and a half uh, so um, wide. It's a larger gauge. So I want you to think about the sort of giant squid axon of having. Uh, the addition of a dispersive viscoelastic at the first time you detect there's a posterior capsular tear. And the second thing is to always have a second um, a new uh, port for the anterior retractor uh, so that you don't use the large uh, main incision. So the objectives for the talk is to first do more, no more harm. And I think that's very important when we're doing anterior retractomy. Recognize the signs of vitreous prolapse, uh, learn the fluidics of anterior retractomy, and then learn about how to cut um, use this, uh, the septic cutter speed. So here's uh, another example where we have vitreous loss on the right. And the signs of vitreous loss include chamber deepening, like we showed in the last example. The pupil widens, lens material will shift or won't come to the tip, uh, and the lens doesn't rotate as well. And you can see uh, here in just a few minutes, a uh, very similar situation where we have uh, nuclear fractus and we have the very end of the case. Uh, and uh, this is the most dangerous time uh, for uh, vitreous loss right there, boom, uh, you can see where it occurred. So what is the number one sign of vitreous loss? I think this is funny. This is um, Sergeant Schultz from Hogan Heroes. So the number one sign uh, is denial. That's, that's a funny feeling that you get when you're doing um, a case where all of a sudden you begin to realize that something funny is uh, going on. Here's an example uh, of denial. Uh, you can see that once again, we're near the end of nuclear practice. We just have a little bit more to go. Uh, we've got a fairly complicated case. This is over at our VA hospital. Uh, you can see we've got the iris hooks out. Um, we're asking ourselves, is there a hole in the posterior capsule? No, because there's nothing funny that happened throughout the whole case. Couldn't be a hole there. Uh, and so instead of uh, placing uh, the dispersive viscoelastic just came right out, and boom, you can see how huge the hole became because of the prolapse of the vitreous, because we didn't control uh, the chamber. So um, the fluid anterior retractomy are fairly simple. Number one is you want to close the chamber. You want to separate the irrigation and the aspiration cutter. And you want to aspirate and cut posterior. So you want to irrigate anterior, and you want to cut posterior so that you set up a fluid gradient such that the vitreous is pushed posteriorly. You really want to have the bottle as low as possible because every bit of fluid that goes in has to come out somewhere. So you don't want to overwhelm the eye and have fluid spill out around the incisions, bringing vitreous anterior. One of the ways to sort of pay attention to what's going on with the vitreous is to stain it. And so this paper from Scott Burke, where he talked about using uh, preservative-free trimcinolone to me was very seminal. And now, of course, you can get that uh, preservative-free without having to wash it off uh, by buying a brand name such as Triessence. So here's an example where uh, we really found um, the stain useful. You can see where 
um, in a situation with a very, very large posterior capsular tear here. Uh, and uh, we've got a nice anterior capsulotomy, but we've got a large posterior capsular tear. And, um, and so we're just getting used to using the stain. And so if we're just going to say, okay, is there any vitreous coming forward? We're going to use the wax cell sponge here and don't see any evidence of that. Now we're going to place some triamcinolone in. Nothing stains. But look at this terrible technique. We've got fluid going in through the left hand, but we've got a large incision with just leaky, leaky fluid coming out around this large incision. So we have no control of the anterior chamber. So basically what we're doing is we're putting fluid into the eye, allowing it to come out, and it's going to wash vitreous with it. So this fluidics is very simple. You want a closed chamber, and uh, you want to make sure the instruments fit tightly uh, into the eye um, so that you don't have um, prolapse of the vitreous. Still, there's no vitreous coming forward, but once again, we're using this very, very poor technique with a large incision. Fluid is pouring out around the large incision, and um, we are not doing a good job controlling the chamber. You can see the chamber is flat most of this time. So we should have made a separate incision. Now, by the time we've done this three times, you can see that the vitreous is clearly coming forward now uh, with the stain, and we have effectively created a system to bring vitreous forward, which was the exact opposite uh, of our intention. So the cut rate uh, for this work uh, is fairly simple. When you're doing vitreous work, you want the cut rate to be as high as possible. And uh, when you're doing um, this work, uh, you want the uh, cut rate to be lower. You want high for vitreous work and you want low for lens work. Sometimes you'll turn off the cutter if you want to grab some residual material. So here we've cut the cutter off. We're going to go out and grab some material and pull it in. Turn it off again, go out and grab some and pull it in. We've got a lower cut rate because we're working on lens material. But once we bring it to the center, we're not sure if there's vitreous present or not, and so we're going to turn the cutter on and not just suck it out. Turn the cutter off out in the periphery because we want to preserve what capsule remnants are there. Bring it to the center, turn the cutter on, uh, as shown. Here's a case um, from a few years ago. It's an interesting case where uh, we had poor use of the second instrument. This is a resin that's just getting started just beginning to uh, sort of use the second hand, which is kind of tricky at first. And um, you can see uh, that the fluid is just running right out through this paracentesis because of poor control of that hand. But the worst thing is that there's a, a, a situation here where the instrument was put way too far into the eye. Uh, and um, as a result of going too far into the eye, uh, the um, uh, there was an injury of the posterior capsule, which we're, we're going to see in just a second. Looked at the tape, and you can see that she's having trouble getting the Drysdale and the needle organized. And right there, she smack the posterior capsule. Watch as the Drysdale in slow motion gets stuck a little bit on the needle and she really whips that posterior capsule. And I think that's the reason that we have this posterior capsular tear. So now we've made an additional incision for the anterior retractor. And initially we've got the cut rate very high at about 800 with a vacuum of about 150 so that we can remove the vitreous, which is in this area. So we're trying to beat the vitreous back down to the area of the posterior capsule. We're adding some visco here to stabilize the chamber as we begin to remove some cortical material. We're using a 23 gauge cortex extractor here with no infusion of fluid. We're just going in and we're grabbing a hold of the cortical material and with a dry technique, we're just removing the cortical material and placing it in the center where later we'll remove it with the anterior vitrectomy instruments as shown here. Now we take the cut rate way down to about 200 or so so that we can more easily get this cortical material out of there. Now here we're going to show an alternative technique where you turn the cutter off and engage the cortical material and then bring it to the center as shown here and then you can engage the cutter again in the center. So this is a nice technique where you turn off the cutter 
go out to the periphery, a little bit of vacuum, pull it to the center, and then turn the cutter back on. You have the cutter on the center because that's an area where you think there's likely to be some vitreous. So in summary for anterior vitrectomy, you want to close the anterior chamber. You want to make sure that uh, the chamber is sealed around your instruments because the vitreous will follow anterior chamber leaks and prolapse further. You want to cut posteriorly and you want to irrigate anteriorly so that there's a pressure gradient so that the front of the eye has a higher pressure than the back of the eye, which tends to push the vitreous back into its home. And you can want to consider the use of triamcinolone stain because it's very useful for visualizing the otherwise invisible vitreous. This is Tom Oding. Thank you very much. And again,